What's up everybody, I'm The Drink Pro, and today we're doing a very intimate review of E.H. Taylor's Straight Ride. What's up everybody, Kyle The Drink Pro here with you yet again. I've been gone for a little while. I've been going through a very stressful time in my life. It's going to be a little bit more sporadic with the uploads for the next couple of days, but thank you all for supporting me. And I'm going to try not to read too much into the fact that uh, I got more new subscribers while I was gone than I have at any one time <laughs> in a while while I was making videos. So I'll just pretend like that's uh, that's just building up anticipation or something like that. Today we've got the E.H. Taylor Straight Rye. I'm excited about this review. I have not seen enough people talking about this pour, and that makes me very curious about it. Now, what's unique to me about the E.H. Taylor straight rye is that it is the only rye at Buffalo Trace that I know of that has no corn in it. So there is a rye mash bill that Buffalo Trace uses for almost all their products. He uses it for the Van Winkle line. They use it for pretty much every rye they've got, but not this rye. This rye actually only has rye grain and malted barley. That's it. Now that looks a lot more like what you see from people like MGP, a 95.5. I don't know what the percentages are in this. They don't disclose that, but we know it's a high rye with no corn. So 95.5 very well could be something like that, a much more traditional rye in sort of air quotes. Now this is also a bottled and bond product, meaning it is the product of one distillery, one distiller, one season of distilling, and it's bonded, warehouse aged for at least four years. There are, I think, a couple of other restrictions, but I can't remember everything off the top of my head. Point is, the relatively restrictive process, and it was one that was first advocated by E.H. Taylor himself. He worked with John Carlyle, who I think they still have commemorated on this label somewhere. Yeah, there he is. That's Mr. Carlyle. Those two worked together to get the Bottled and Bond Act passed in 1897. Now, before I get into this pour, I want to remind you guys that I am going to do a serious lineup of E.H. Taylor products. I've got the sample bottles right there behind me. It's going to be a great video. That is going to be a live stream, I believe, July 1st. Double check me on the date, but it is one, not this Thursday, not next Thursday, the Thursday after that. I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of really cool E.H. Taylors. There are only a small number that I don't have let me tell you what I'm looking for. I'm still looking for the Old Fashioned Sour Mash, the 18 Year Marriage, the Season Wood, the Warehouse C Tornado, the regular Warehouse C that's coming out this year, and then the Barrel Proof Editions 1 through 7. I've got 8 and 9. I don't know if 10's out yet. If 10's out, I'm looking for it too. But literally every other E.H. Taylor product I do have a sample of and I will be doing a live stream with on July 1st. So get subscribed if you aren't already and make sure you'll check that out. By the way, I'm not sure how much is being left into this video. I'm not going to do a very hard edit. I'm going to keep this pretty loose. I'm probably not going to add music to it. It's going to be a more intimate feel, uh, more akin to my older videos. As you can see, uh, the barrel head fell off of my door. So <laughs> I'm not going to put it back up. And hopefully when I get into a new space, I will be able to put it somewhere somewhere nice and more stable. But enough talk, let's get into this rye. And by the way, I still got Drink Pro glasses for sale if you want one. Now, I don't typically like these higher rye grain ryes, so I'm trying to come into this with a open mind. I, I did a review of this earlier uh, on my Patreon, so if you're not already on the Patreon, you should definitely go check it out. I do videos every Friday that are unedited, just me trying new things that you're not going to see on the regular channel. So get subscribed but also consider joining the Patreon. That review was a very fresh crack in the bottle. This one has had a little bit of air on it, not a bunch, for a little bit of time, not a bunch, but enough that it's gonna open up a lot more than it probably was on that first bottle crack when I did that review. So let's go ahead and nose this. Wow, this is much, much sweeter than I remember. That was actually sort of a knock against it. And I will say I did that review outside, uh, which can affect how it tastes and how it smells, especially if there's any kind of air movement. This ambient air in the room I'm in right now is very stagnant. But this smells very sweet. Much sweeter than I'd expect for a 95.5 mash bill. I get a lot of honey. Obviously, I get a lot of grain. The citrus is really bright. When you think about malted barley, I think uh, the sweetness always feels like honey to me, but sometimes rye grains can be very herbal, and sometimes they can present a little bit brighter and more citrusy, almost like hops. Uh, it's getting this sort of bright, sweet, but also earthy note. Interestingly, I'm almost getting like this sweet chocolate note of the nose. Not dark chocolate at all, but like a, uh, like a sweet candy, um, 
you know, almost like a Hershey's chocolate or even like maybe a Reese's Pieces. I'm not sure I'm getting peanut butter per se, but that kind of like barely chocolatey chocolate because it's so sugar, sugary sweet. Sugary sweet. And the more I keep smelling this, the more it's starting to come to the forefront that this is definitely a high rye. The rye grains are showing up. Uh, I'm getting a lot more of a grainy note, whereas it started almost entirely sugary sweet. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and taste this thing for the first time in a while. See, now this has opened up really well because it's definitely grain forward. It's definitely awry, but a lot of the sharp edges that I remember have smoothed out. On the finish is where the rye grain is most predominant. It's got almost a bitter grain finish. Uh, again, kind of reminding me of hops, which is interesting because rye is a grain. Hops are more of the floral component, uh, but it still has grain-like qualities. Yeah, and on the second taste, you can really see that sweetness popping out uh, early and then immediately moving into this sort of citrusy, almost bready component. Uh, and then very quickly from there, it has this almost, not meaty in terms of flavor, but meaty in terms of texture. It's uh, It's got a thickness to it in the mid palate that is pretty uncommon for 100 proof, in my opinion. And then the finish is very much herbal, a little bit bitter, Definitely rye. And I tell you what, after tasting it and going back to the nose, I'm getting this really nice, almost uh, like toffee or molasses. This deeper sweetness is starting to show up. That's something that's really fun to me. It's like a caramel apple. That's what it is. Caramel apple. Final thoughts on the taste. I'm surprised how light it is on the palate. Uh, I don't remember it being that light. I remember it being a lot more like the classic 95.5 rise that I'm used to having. But after opening up a little bit, it gets a lot of those light, high notes. It's very citrusy. Uh, it's herbal in the high, tingly kind of sense instead of the deep, uh, rich, uh, almost grassy or almost bitter sense. Now, there is this bitterness on the finish, but it really feels like a natural rye bitterness. It follows this journey of like light and sweet and gentle, mid palate's kind of bready, and then you get that bite of the rye at the finish. Overall, I think it's a good pour. It's a good experience, but I also think this is not a rye for people who love Buffalo Trace and all their other products because it's not like any of their other products. This is totally unique. It's totally a product unto its own, uh, and that's a cool thing to have. It's a fun thing to try, but this is not something that I would uh, seek out again, I don't think. I don't remember what I paid for it. I don't remember what the MSRP is, but I'll tell you what, if you can get for MSRP and you like Rise, I would definitely pick it up. If you're not a big 95.5 rye or a high rye mash bill rye drinker, it's going to kind of get lost in the shuffle. It really is. Yes, it's got a nice complexity. Yes, it's got a nice lightness, but there are so many good ryes up there. Ryes are really having a resurgence right now. I'll tell you what, if you haven't seen my video where I try the JW Kelly, you should definitely check that out. I think I did that in a live stream, but it's worth subscribing to keep an eye out for things like that because that was a diamond in the rough. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I know it's a little bit weird right now in this environment, uh, but things are going to continue to happen, and I hope to make a more regular content for you again soon. Keep your eye out. This Thursday, I'm going to be doing a live stream uh, built on one of a, my patrons who sent me some really cool pours. So that's going to be a good time. I hope you'll tune in. It's going to be this Thursday, I think at 8 or 8.30. I will definitely post that tonight. So keep drinking like professionals, everybody. Cheers.